for today as well. Um, I know all of you are looking forward to exploring the automation. Um, and if you haven't downloaded the automation demo from the website, please do so. You need a Windows-based tablet. I tried to do it on my Mac, couldn't do it. I thought, hey, how cool that would be. But you know, it doesn't work with that. It has to be Windows-based. So do it on your desktop, your laptop, or your tablet. And then you can join and follow along with me. Okay, I will show you how to do that in just a second. Um, let me show you a few pictures that I received through the emails and I really appreciate the pictures and all the questions that you guys send me. So Jeanette, she sent me her beautiful quilts that she's been working on and she sent me a whole slew of them because she's very creative and has lots of great ideas. So this is her grandmother's flower garden that she quilted. Um, and she's also been doing some clothing as well. And it's really fun because she goes to the thrift shops and picks up pieces or she finds these um, pieces and she's making them into clothing. So very talented. Thank you, Jeanette. And then Sandy sent me her quilt. Now I've been working with Sandy for a while on helping her learn um, pattern cat using the automation and this is her gorgeous quilt that she quilted for her son and it's just the diamonds and it was a lot of fun to work with her um, she did an absolutely beautiful job on it so you know just be supportive and, and just send me those pictures and let me show off what you're doing because we love to see it okay Let's get to the automation. There's so much to show you today, I'm so excited. I love talking quilting. I love talking all sorts of quiltings and the automation is one aspect of quilting that if you want to explore, here's your chance. Okay, so with the demo mode, let me just let you know. <laughs> I downloaded it and then I deleted it, but I was designing a pattern and I did it in the demo. <laughs> so you can design, but you can't print it off or save it. It won't let you. So make sure that if you have the automation, <laughs> then to delete the demo mode so you don't do what I do and I have to start all over. So anyway, let's go to graceframe.com. And I'm here on our website and you'll see all the fabulous cells going on. We've got lots of new things coming up as well. So lots of exciting things happening here at the Grace Company. And across the top, Top, you'll see automation just click on automation it's going to take you to that page okay and then I want you just to scroll down and you'll find the free demo version if you'll click on that you'll download it to your download files so I'm going to come down here and find my download file and I've already loaded it on okay so I'm just going to come over here and find my downloads off to the side so if you can't see that, um, I can enlarge the window. Okay, can you see that better? <laughs> Just want to make sure that you're seeing everything. Okay, so along the left side here, you'll find your downloads. And mine's right here, and you'll see right here at the very top, my QCT5 demo. It gives you a date, and it's the new updated demo, which will have when we send you the update, which is not yet, okay, it's coming, please be patient, you'll get a notification if you already have the automation. So you'll see a notification, and I'll show you that once we get in. So if you'll double click on that, then you can run it and download it onto your computer okay so I'm gonna come down here because I've already loaded it on because we don't trust the internet back here we have a few little problems with it I'm gonna come over here I'm going to my Windows SSD file okay um, on this and I'm gonna open it up and that's where you'll find all the automation software and you'll notice I have quite a bit I have a lot of a lot of um, beta versions because I do a lot of beta testing for the next version coming out I also have the APQS and the Juki because I've been do, working a lot with um, helping them with their updates so I'm going to find my demo, double click on it, and then I'm going to come over here to my Quilters Creative Touch, and this is the application. This application is the one I want to open, so I'm just going to double click on it, and now it's loading. 
Okay, so now I'm loading the software. We're just going to give it a minute, I'm hoping it does its job. I thought I'd finished all this, but not. Okay, sorry, we can answer some questions <laughs> in the meantime. Can, okay, Linda is asking, can someone type the name of the software she's talking about? I'm hard of hearing. Uh, yes. Can somebody type the name? <laughs> Amanda or somebody who is in chat, please type the name so she can understand what I'm going through. Oh boy, this could be a long time. And it's the Quilter's Creative Touch. And that's just the name of the software. The hardware is called Quilt Motion. So the hardware side of the automation is what we call the motor plate and the belts and all the screws and everything to attach it um, to your carriage on your, on your frame. And then the software side of it is um, the, auto, the software is the software that's loaded onto it um, that applies that application. And it t connects using USB cords and the USB cords are like that communication cable to connect the motor plate with the automation. And I'm really sorry that it's taking so long. It may take a long time. Okay, I, Brenda is asking if I have QCT, I don't have a download, download the demo. No, you don't necessarily, um, but the demo that I'm showing you has the new um, updated features that are going to be, you're going to be updating to coming very, very soon. I believe that like next week, maybe, okay? <laughs> so like I said, you'll get a little notification. And I may just have to open up one, <laughs> mine, and not do this download. So you know what? I'm just gonna click out of this because it's taking too long. I can't stop it, not responding. I'm gonna close the program. All right, and now we're just gonna go the back way in because I have it loaded on. All right, I'm just gonna come over here and find my file folder and I'll just go to my version and not the demo. All right, so I'm gonna come down here and to, let's see, which one is it? It's this one right here. And I'm going to come over here. Okay, now I'm loading. All right, okay, here we go. Now we're in business, okay. Now, when you are not connect connected to the actual motor plate or the automation, you're just using the software, it's called simulation mode. And simulation mode, it just acts. What it shows you the actions that it would be doing if you were actually quilting. It's a great way for you to learn the software and how the buttons and functions are applied. So I encourage you to connect and just play with it in simulation mode. Now Carolyn is asking, will that also be for the Brother 15? Um, maybe. <laughs> I'm not quite sure about that, but Carolyn, if you will email me, Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A, at graceframe.com and ask me that question, I will find that answer out, how we're going to take care of that. Um, because I know that they've got something that they're going to be doing for you, but I don't know what it is. Okay, so I just want to be correct in my answers, and that is one I'm not sure of. All right, so please email me. It's Carla with a K, K A R L A at graceframe.com. All right, so now I've opened it up in simulation mode, and I'm going to say yes, I want to continue. Okay. And you'll notice that this is version 5.05.83, and this is the new updated version. And I'm just going to say cancel and not worried about my gold card. I'm not even going to go into the gold cards. Okay, here we are. Okay, um, Christiane Dossers um, is asking, um, if you're from Canada, will you get the notifications? Yes. If you're using the QCT5 right now, that current version, you will get a notification. Um, and 
it'll let you know but you have to be connected to the internet okay when you connect to the internet to do the updates on your computers just make sure that you look for that notification okay so you know you might want to check wednesday thursday next week to see if there's an update by connecting to the internet okay here we are the home page uh, of the QCT, our updated version, and you'll notice nothing's changed at all here. But I'm just going to go through it and show you some of the key features. So this is the automation. Um, let me just talk about across the top here, we have our help. So if you click on your help, here we have all the little help files. And across the top, you have your tutorials. And you see all these tutorials. If you click on the next one that says help, here's a lot of help files. Now, I revamped the help files to make them a little shorter, okay? So they're not quite so long and detailed. <laughs> um, Becky Higley says, I'm sorry, I'm multitasking. Do we download the demo on our tablet or our computer? What's ever easiest for you to use your mouse? I, I don't care, whichever one. So I do it on your computer because you're not connecting your computer to it. So just download it on your desktop or your laptop, okay? So, and then we have our videos and then chips, okay? So just know that this is where you'll go to click on a help file. And if you need some help understanding, they're very informative and they're made um, just like how you would actually be applying them to a quilt. Okay, that being said, that on the help files, um, there are kind of two applications. There's the computer side of it, but there's also the quilt side of it. So what you do in moving your machine across the quilt is also an important part of the automation. So in the help files, I've made it so that you can see what your screen's supposed to be doing and then also what your machine's supposed to be doing. So I've tried to bring them together so it's just very cohesive and easy to understand. I like easy and I know you do too. And it's very complicated. You think automation would be really complicated, but the more you try and learn and use it, the easier it becomes. And that's with anything with quilting. So, okay, let's get back to the computer. I'm gonna talk your heads off today. Now, across the right side, we'll see all of these um, little important features. I have a big help file written up of what each of them do and what they what intel, what it entails inside each of these buttons. But let's go to the settings. Okay, this is your settings that will open up when you get the automation. It's not hard to do, so it's going to ask you some key important um, items or questions before you start quilting. Um, we need to know what style of frame you're using because obviously the rolling frame, which is the one that you roll your quilt up on, is different than a hoop frame. And application of quilting is a little different. Um, on a rolling frame, you're not shifting your fabric from side to side, front to back. You are just rolling it up. So it um, works differently than say a hoop frame where you're shifting your fabric in sections. So you need to tell it <clears throat> which frame you have, then really important, okay? And especially if you're upgrading from one machine to another, you need to apply the correct machine. So we want you to go to sewing machine model and mine says Cunic 19, but because we change machines so often, we have to be very careful about choosing the correct machine. So say you started out with your home domestic machine, you have the automation, and you're upgrading to say a 21. Um, then you'll want to come over here and do your change sewing machine and find the Cunic 21 or what machine you're upgraded to. So that one you'll need to change for it to work correctly. Then I want you to come down here and notice at the very bottom um, we have, well you have your safe area and your zone scale. Okay, then you have your reset do not shows. That's kind of a little different. Um, this is a little, and you'll see in this new update that on each of the little pop-up messages, uh, sometimes they get a little annoying and you don't want to see them. So this will enable you to, um, you know, turn them off for the session only. And then the, when you open back up, they'll reapply themselves 
or you can permanently disable them. Now, it's not permanent, don't worry about it, but you can come back in and then you can reset them if you feel like you're missing that step. So this is kind of one of those things that I'll come back and, and show you how it works. So, okay, so that's really an important part of when you're upgrading or if you're opening up the automation. I just wanted to show you those key items. Okay, so we're done with that. So let's click on select and sew, okay? So when you click on one of either the pantograph, select and sew, quilt CAD, and this is QCT 5 Pro, okay, um, and the update, you have to give it a safe area. And the safe area is your quilting area on your quilt that you'll actually be quilting. And so when you're in simulation mode, it just needs that. It's a good way for you to explore all these options. So when we're opening up in simulation mode, I'm going to give it the biggest safe area I possibly can. So I'm going to click on OK, and it's going to have your little um, range calculator pop up. It's not a calculator. It's like a little tin key. And I'm going to put in 150 for my width, and I'm going to click on OK. And then I'm going to put in 30 for my depth. And this is going to allow me the biggest. Now the width is the width that it will actually sew. And the depth will be always the depth of your sewing machine. So every time you come in and you're setting it, you're setting it the width to your quilt top. Well, a little bit off because you want as big as possible. And then the depth will be set by your sewing machine. All right, so now we're in, I want to show you these because these are key important feature for you to learn so that you can learn to use the help files more accurately. So look at right up here at the top left. This is the name of that screen that you're on. It's the read pattern screen. Now I didn't name it, Brad did. He's a wonderful programmer and he has done this software from scratch. And so kudos to him. Give them all a thumbs up. Tell them way to go because it's improving all the time. All right, so this is your read pattern screen, and you'll notice that across the top here, we have different file folders. And in each of these file folders, there are different design types. So right here, we have block, continuous line, triangles, and border sets. And then over here, if you have, or remember, um, have the gold card access, then you get all those beautiful designs that are made and you can load them into your gold access um, folder. All right, so that right here, we have patterns, okay? These are where I store all my extra patterns that I purchase and they come in in a batch folder. So let's see what I've got in here. These are all the ones that I've purchased and yeah, and I've made. So I've put them all in this folder. And so there's some really good ones. There's some that don't sew really well. There's some that sew really well <laughs> and that need some tweaking. So anyway, so I'm gonna go back. And so, and here's Amanda's designs right here that I had her working on. I was working on a little a daisy doodle um, but a lot of fun. So just organize your designs because we spend a lot of money on them. You don't want to repurchase one that you already have. So I've been, been there, done that. So just be careful on how you um, file them away. Maybe it's by the designer. Maybe it's by the website that you um, purchase them from. So be careful. Um, so anyway, that's this. And let's go back to... Let's just pick one out. So I'll let's do my daisy doodle. I don't know which one is, that's okay. And I'm gonna open it up. It's going to come in and I'm going to be in, okay. Now I want you to notice across the top here, okay. It's going to have, oh, it's covered up. So let me, can we pull it down? Okay. Across the top there is, it's called, this one is called the pattern placement screen, okay. Um, just important for you to know, and notice across the top, we have a feature, a couple of new features. We have the save pattern and reverse. I'm going to show you what these do. Now, you won't have them on yours, but these are new and coming up with the next update. Okay, so let me show you what it does. So 
when you're in simulation mode, your mouse or your little arrow is your sewing machine. See that little arrow on the screen? I don't want to make you sick, but this is your sewing machine. So wherever I move it, it would be where you would be moving your sewing machine on your quilt, okay? And we're just playing around. So this is my block pattern and I have placed it. So notice I have a start point and an end point right here. And I've already placed my design. Okay, Robin is asking, is QCT5 available to put on different machines? Um, did I understand that? Yes, it can be applied with different machines. If you want to go to our website and see which machines it's compatible with, we have a compatibility chart that you can find on the website in the automation. So yeah, good question. All right, so back to the screen. All right. And now I'm going to come up here and click on my reverse. All right, and it's asking me, it's popping open, and it's saying reversing the pattern will reset the placement. So I've already placed it, so it's going to reset it because it's swapping the start and the stop points. And I wanna say yes, okay? Now you'll notice that the end, the stop, the start point has become the end point and the end point has become um, the start point. So just reverse and notice your little gray placement node, uh, the nodes are gray rather than green. And you'll just place it again and you're good to go. Now, this reverse works really well if you are quilting down your quilt and you wanna change the start and stop points. So if you ever wanted to know when you would wanna use them, um, that's when you want to use it, is if you were quilting down your quilt and you wanted to reverse those. It's kind of a cool feature. And now, if you've done a little change and say we wanted to rotate this and stand it on point, okay? And I wanted to save this design. You can go in and now save it and save it on point. And we'll say on point. Do, doodle, whoops, SY. And then I wanna click enter on the keyboard and notice that the, the name of it is down in the file name and I wanna click save. Okay, so now I can go into my select pattern and there you see it, it's there. And then that just makes it easier for you if you have say um, a sashing or a little border design that you wanted to keep that size. On sashings, the size doesn't really change, but you've already set it up, so you wanna keep it that size. So you could save it in your little file folder and then just pull it every time you're going to use it. So it's a really nice feature, both of those. Okay, so got a couple more to show you on this page as well. So I want you to look down here underneath the toolbox, okay? And you'll see what we call an Insta place. That's for an application that's coming a little ways down the road, but it's kind of fun to use in simulation mode. And let me show you how it works. All right, so notice that it's unchecked right now, so you really don't see anything that's going on. But I'm gonna come over here and check it. And look, I have this little select that's popped open and you'll notice that the little green node right up here at the top, um, the top left, is, is a green node with a yellow circle around it. Okay, with this Insta place, it, it helps you place the design in a specific way. Um, and so it has all its nodes. So let me show you the different placements. So I'm going to move over here. So wherever my mouse goes, that's gonna go. So if I wanna keep doing that, that's what InstaPlace does. Now, if I wanted to go and now I've placed this, this node right here, this placement node, and I wanna change and place this bottom one, I have to tap on the select. And notice what happens. The, the bottom <clears throat> right node is now the little one with the yellow circle around it. So now I can move my little cursor and it's the one that's gonna move. Pretty cool. It's called 
insta place. Now, to change back to this top one, say I want to do four point, okay? Notice that now all of my nodes are gray, okay? So now I'm going to place this one first. So wherever that cursor goes, that's going to go. So wherever your sewing machine would go, that one would go. Now I want to tap on select. And when I do, it's going to show me the next one that needs to be placed. So I want to turn it right here, okay? And that's going to be placed there. Then I have to tap on select again. And then I want to just pull it down here. And then select again to do the last one. Not perfectly straight, but I could change it. There you go. Looks a little better. But have fun playing with that one when you get your update. So it's a lot of fun. All right, so that is pretty much it. So now I'm going to click in reverse and show you um, one other thing, okay? So it, again, you have reversing the pattern will reset the placement. Do you wish to continue? So notice that you have yes, cancel, or do not show again. So let's click on do not show again. Okay, here's that message I was talking to you about that we could reset. We could reset for the session only or permanently. This is cool because sometimes you get those little annoying messages that's like, oh, do I have to check again for my needle to be up? Well, now you can get rid of it. Okay, so you can take it away for the session only and it'll reoccur. So read the screen, it says, session only will keep the pop-up disabled until the program is restarted. So when you restart the program, it's going to come back. So don't get rid of them unless you absolutely hate them and are just done with them, okay? Because um, you might forget a step that is really needed, okay? Um, so we have a good question. What is the advantage of the Insta place compared to the regular placement? Really, in simulation mode, it's kind of fun to play with. Um, there's an app application coming down the road that I, I'm sworn to for right now that will be really beneficial, um, but it's a little while out. So we're just building it in, and it's a great little feature to play with. Um, because you have to go and click that select, um, you may not want to do that. But it kind of gives you a little bit more accurate placement because you're just tapping on the screen and it's moving. So, so you try it out, see if you like it. If you don't like it, you don't have to use it for right now, okay? So it's just another way to explore quilting um, with a little bit different aspect on it. Okay, so back to our screen, and then permanently we'll always keep the pop-up disabled. Any of these pop-ups can be re-enabled by clicking on help, so it's telling you steps on how to re-enable them. So you'll click on the help like I showed you earlier, get into the settings like I showed you earlier, and then reset do not show. So that's easily how you can get them back. So don't need to worry about it, and we'll just do for the session only. Okay, so we're done with this screen. It's been a lot of fun to explore, so let's go back to the home screen. So I'm gonna click on my little red X right up here at the top left, and now I'm back in my home screen. All right, let's explore Pattern CAD. I love Pattern CAD. Pattern CAD is where you can tweak a design and fix it to make it work for your quilt, or you can create your own amazing design so that you can quilt it. So, you know, I want you to notice that everything looks the same, but if you will look down here at the little bottom right next to quilt, you'll see this little preview button. It's like, oh, what does that do? That's a new feature. Yeah, it is. It's kind of fun too. So let me show you how preview works. All right, so when we're quilting, uh, when we're drawing our designs, I'm just going to use the draw. I'm gonna come up here, over here, um, towards the right at the top where we see pattern and right down here underneath that we have draw and edit. I want to draw, I want to use a line and I'm just going to draw uh, some silly little loops. And they're not gonna look very good, but that's okay. All right, so here are my little loops and on, now I can tap on preview and look, 
it gives you a preview of what this look or this design would look like all the way across your quilt. And it's also telling you it's not close enough to make it continuous so you can go back and reset it. So you can do your row spacing, you can reset the size. There's a lot of fun features that you can use and, and just play with. So try that out and have fun playing with that one because it's going to be a real fun one. I've already used it several times. so. I know you'll love it. Okay, so that's Pattern Cat, and I'm not going to jump in and show you all the ins and outs. We are going to show you step by step some little increments. So one day we might just focus on Pattern Cat, one day we might just focus on um, Panographs, and one day we might just focus on Select and Sew and showing you all the ins and outs. Okay, so now that I've showed you that one, let's go into panograph because I'm very excited to show you that. So I'm just going to come my, over to the top left, click on my X, and no, I don't want to save my design. I'm going to get out of that. So I want to come into panograph here. So let's go, would you like to reset the safe area? So this is another new one. Okay. We know there, there are a lot of quilters out there who go from one quilt to another. And to reset your safe area using your toolbox really isn't <clears throat> as easy and conducive. So you can reset your safe area and if you go to the toolbox, it'll take you out to this home screen so you have to re um, reset your safe area correctly. So if your quilter whose quilting is a business, this is a really great feature. And it also will really help us home quilters who love quilting go from one to the next just really quickly. So we're going to say, nope, I don't want to reset my safe area. And then now we're in our panograph screen. And panographs are so fun. There's, there are different applications of using a pattern graph. You can use it all over your quilt as an edge to edge or you can use it in a section for a sashing or a border, or you can just quilt a little section at a time. So it's a lot of fun to use. So let's explore Panograph. So on the Panograph screen, um, how I've written my help files is I have noticed that this is the Panto stacker screen right here towards the top. Um, and <clears throat> you will see that it's, this screen is named. So I've gone through and I've numbered each of these little icons as little tools and I go through each of them and how they work. Um, some of them are just, I use them all the time, like the ruler, this fabulous ruler. Um, resume sewing session and I teach you what they're all about and how to use them. So let's come down here towards the bottom of the screen and see all these little buttons. So I want you to notice that you have your select pattern here so you have it two places, up at the top next to the home, and select pattern here. Next to it, right across from it, is panto mode. If you'll click on that, I want you to click on power panto. It has a new feature. I'm really excited to show you. I want you to notice off to the right, it's a stagger feature. I know you're astounded, because this is really cool. It's a lot of fun too. All right, so let's make one and stagger it. Okay, so let's go and pull a design. And I'm going to come in here and just go to my continuous line designs. And you can see Carla's been working on some new ones. So let's see if we can find. Now, if you're going to stagger, it doesn't matter if you're using basic mode, easy mode, or power panto mode, you need to make sure that you pick a pattern or design, a pattern or design um, that has one single pattern. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So notice I'm going to pick this little cute little owl, but notice that you have the curl circle down here. That has two of them. So it throws the stagger off um, and it won't stagger correctly. So I'm just going to pick the little owl and open him up. So with Power Panto, it's the fastest and easiest way to sew an edge to edge quilt. So it's taking my calculations, so it's taking my 150 by my 30, and it's deciding how many can fit across and how many rows down. Now, notice my pattern height is 10 inches. That's pretty big. So I want to lower it, so I'm going to make the sizing just a little smaller. 
See, I can make it really, really small, or I can adjust it. This is what I like about Power Pencil. You can really adjust it. So let's um, go in, like, just like that. So you can see them stagger. Okay, so let's do my spacing, just a little bit, separate them. And now let's come over here and just tap on stagger. Da, da, da. Now it's offset every other row. Just fine, and it looks really cute, and it's a lot of fun. So it's just a really fun way. Power Panto is just a lot of fun. So if you don't know what the buttons do, or if you want to flip them and play with them, this is the best way to learn how these buttons work. So I'm just going to jump in and start flipping, and I'll show you. Now we're turning them upside down, right side up, and play. Now, every time you flip or rotate a design, you're breaking a connection. You're breaking the start and stop points. So you have to be really careful um, so that you get them reconnected. Otherwise, you're going to have little breaks in your design when you go to quilt it. So um, let's see if I broke any of them. Now I'm going to click on Sew in Zones, and we'll see what happens. Now this is going to take me out of my Panto Stacker screen to what we call our quilting interface screen. And yes, if you are quilting this for real, you would want to save it, and it's going to save it in your Resume Sewing Session file folder so that when you come back in, you're done quilting for the day, um, you will use that. I'm going to say no. Okay. So no, I didn't break connections, but I do have some little breaks here on the side. I don't care. Um, I could connect them through my Optimize. So let me show you these features on this screen. So notice I have these little blue dots where it's jumping from one to the other section and starting because I flipped it and, and um, turned it horizontally. So <laughs> it's not one cohesive all the way down. So I want to connect these, okay? So I'm just going to say remove all. Now you don't always want to remove all. And that's why I suggest that you come in and do your designing before you start quilting, okay? And notice how it made a sewing line right here on the sides for connecting one to the next. So it's just going to sew continuously all the way across. And I'm going to say, okay, I don't care. It's going to sew off my quilt, and that's fine with me. Okay. On the quilting interface screen, besides the optimize where it, you can uh, readjust how the pattern sews, um, there's this great feature in here. It's called Zone Manager. I just wanted you to see this because I really like being able to work with the Zone Manager and it helps, it's help, really helped me understand how it's going to be set up and how it's going to sew. So, so there are some features in there I just want you to explore. And this is a chance to explore because we're not connected. So it says it's a warning, okay? So it, if I had already placed my design, um, then I would have to replace it again after I come back out of Zone Manager. So always be careful. If you've done any adjustments to your quilt or anything, replace your design or it's not going to sew correctly. So I'm just going to say yes, I want to open up Zone Manager. Okay, and this is what it looks like. So you'll see this area right here is, is what's going to be quilting in my first area, okay? Um, because my, it has my width at 100% and my height. So this is where you can change the zone scale right here. Um, so we can change it to 95, won't let me. Okay, so I must have changed it from a hoop or something. Um, so don't worry about that. We'll get through that. Um, and over here we have our zone number. So we have one, two, because this is only 30 inches. So I have two zones. <laughs> so this is my first zone. And this is my second zone. So it's showing you the whole quilt. So you see zone one and zone two. And then it, and then over here, if you want to change how it's going to sew, we have two different zone preferences for the zone placement. We have center and we have four point. 
want you to try both of them because they both have different applications and how you want to use them. Now, I would probably use center for an edge-to-edge -edge design all the way down um, if I was sewing off my quilt. Four point is absolutely fabulous if you have a quilt that you want to quilt the center section um, and use an edge-to-edge -edge design or and it has a border that you're going to sew around it. So different ways to interact with your quilt. Now you can change the starting position. You can go from alternate or start from the left. And you have your sewing direction. So you, you have continuous and then you have uniform. Okay, so I wouldn't pick continuous if I was sewing inside the parameters of a quilt because you want it to stop and you don't want that sewing line. So stop and think about what it's gonna look like if you pick one of these. So this is a great way for you to jump in and learn. Notice right up here, you can click on show zones. Now it's gonna show you the zone numbers. And then we have right here, we have end point adjust. So just lots of different ways. Now I'm gonna click out of this and say, okay, well, I wanna go back up to one. I'm gonna say, okay. And here's my first zone. Now, it's done all of its placements, so I've done four point. So my, my safe area is gonna be really tight, okay? So, really, really tight. But when I'm playing with it in simulation mode, it's not gonna hurt. But it'll take a minute. And you can play and see how it's going to sew. See, I made it. Okay, so now I've placed my design and then you can just sew. Now look, okay, this is another new message. It says manually move your machine near the location flagged on the screen. So I'm going to take my machine and move it up over here. That's where it's going to start. Or you can click OK and automation will automatically do it for you. And we'll just say in simulation mode, you will not be able to move the machine. Yeah, that's right, because it's just your little cursor. All right, so it's going to move. It's moving across. I'm going to stop it, but just wanted you to see what it's going to do. It's kind of fun to watch it sew. There we go, and you're watching it sew. And that's what it'll look like if your sewing machine was engaged with the automation. Lots of fun. Now I can stop it, say, oh, my thread broke. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Over here, you have your repair pattern, okay? So I'm gonna click on my repair pattern. I'm gonna move and my machine out of the way. We wanna release the carriage, sorry. I missed the release carriage. We release the carriage, move your machine out of the way, change the bobbin, and then you wanna move it back over here and you're going to find the, where it stopped. You're gonna try and guess, and then you're gonna tap on closest stitch. Not last stitch, closest stitch. Cause closest stitch is gonna re-engage it and then you're gonna click, you're gonna bring your needle up, your bobbin thread up, clicking on your single stitch and then you're gonna click on sew and just finish. So you could practice repairing your design. Um, it's not hard to do. Repairing the design really is very cohesive. And if you have your markings, it's really easy to come back in. So anyway, I got a couple more things to show you. And, okay, Diane is asking, do you do E to E on medium or fast mode? I don't like medium or fast mode. I like slow. So, but if you're doing this as a business, I would choose medium and not fast. Because some of these design machines are so blistering fast, you get a little bit more jerky movements and um, it's not as smooth. So. The more you can slow it down and just be patient and let it sew, the better. Um, so it's just find your mode and what you like. I like slow, okay, um, because that's what I prefer. But try it on medium first, and then you might want to try fast, and you may switch it down, um, one or the other. So how do you go and do that? You ask, 
If you come up here across the top, you see settings. Okay, so when I go into the settings, I can change my sewing speed, and that's how fast the sewing machine is going to sew or move across the quilt from slow, medium, or fast, and I like slow. Um, you can change your tie-off stitch count. The tie-offs are the stitches that it takes to tie your little knot at the beginning of the sewing and at the end. You can change it to three, four, how many you want. You don't want them to build up or stack up. And then you can do your tie-offs as back and forth or micro-stitch. Um, choose whatever you like. Try one with a micro-stitch. See if you like that. Try one with back and forth. See which one you like so that you get the settings completely the way that you like them and how it works. Then you can have the automatic bobbin pull. Now, I have to be honest with you, I do not use the bobbin pull. I think it takes a lot longer. I love using the single stitch um, in the toolbox and at the top of the screen. And then you can change your stitches. So let's talk about stitches and designs. So with this little design here, because he has a fat little belly and some curves and stuff, I would probably do a higher SPI, maybe 12. Now, if you have a lot of little curves, you may want a little more. But remember, if there's a problem, whatever stitch size you have, you might have to unpick. So you want to maybe find that happy medium. Um, so I do anywhere from 11, 12 to 13 stitches. I really don't very often go to 14, but find what works for you. Because um, you guys will all have your likes and dislikes. Everybody's different. And how we interact with the automation, because we can make it um, how we like it, and we can make these settings, explore your options. Okay, so I'm just going to get out of here, and I'm going to click on OK. Um, and then I'm kind of done with this screen, but if you want to go up here at the top, we have zone utilities that kind of gives you some more utilities that you can use and that you'll love to engage with the automation and really make it the way you want to quilt. And off here to the side, um, the far left, we have our plugins. And if you have any of the gold features, or the, if you are, have gold card access, then you will see these gold features like fabric compensation, endpoint adjust, and pattern eclipse. I use them all the time. Becky asks, is there a, okay, is there a way not to stitch a straight line on the left and right sides of the pantograph? Yeah. So what you would do, Okay, so I have my pantograph here, okay, and let me come back out and come back in, okay? Um, I'm just going to go back to how I set it up, all right, and I'm going to come back into sew zones, okay? So I'm going to show you what you would do. Now, first of all, I wouldn't go to optimize, and I wouldn't click on, yeah, okay, notice, oh, all right, it kept it. So I'm going to get back out and redo it, okay? <laughs> Let's do 50 by 50. Okay, I'm resetting it. And I don't want to use power pencil. Let's go into and do another mode of pantographs. So let's say um, easy, okay? So I'm using EZ, and my quilt is going to be 50 wide by 50 tall, or the length, okay? And I'm going to decide that I want to pick my pattern. I want to pick a single pattern. Let's pick my little owl again. Okay, so let's say I want my owl to be 5 inches. I'm going to click on OK. So it takes these measurements. So these measurements here, it's calculating how many owls will fit across 50 inches and how many owls rows will fit down using my 50 inches. And then I put in my height. I want it to be as close to 5 inches as possible. Now let's um, center it and say OK. And now it's going to pull it to the edges. Okay. So now, do I want to stagger? Mm, 
Yeah, we'll stagger. Now we're going to sew in zones. And it's calculating what it's doing now, it's initializing the placements. So it's breaking it up into zones, taking your calculations, and that's what it's doing, it's thinking about it. And I want to say no. Okay, so see right here, I have what we call um, trim lines. So these little trim lines are where it's going to stop sewing, and I'm going to show you how that works. So I'm going to place my design so you can see what a trim line will do. And then I'm going to place him over here, my B placement. And I don't have to do C and D. I'm just showing you. See how it stretched it? So now if I click on sew, it's going to move. But when it gets to this first little blue dot, it's going to stop. So I, wouldn't, I would have it stop, especially if I was sewing inside the parameters of the quilt. All right, so now let's see, it hit a little stop point. Now we want it to move to next. And then we want to hit sew. And this is exactly what it's going to do as you're quilting. But it's worth it if not to have that sewing line because you don't know if it's going to be right there on your seam or it's going to be off into your border or come in on your on your quilt so this is worth it to have trim lines there are times that you need these trim lines and times that you want to get rid of them if i was sewing off my quilt i would get rid of them okay eileen asked does pattern cat or quilt cat help me design quilt tops before i quilt them um they help you to design designs but quilt cad will help you put those designs together so that you can quilt them on your quilt um, there's a little bit more to it but there's nice help files on it um, <coughs> sorry i have to take a drink because you know me and uh, if i get talking all right so and janet Jeanette is asking if i change my design <coughs> hang on they're moving it around. If I change my design, then decide I like the previous placement, how do I, I change it back? Okay, you just go back into your zone manager, okay, and then change it from four point to one point. Okay, you can do that, but you have to be very careful with the spacing. So don't sew a row with one point and then all of a sudden start changing it to four points. You can get into some trouble there. And if I didn't answer that correctly, if that's not what you meant, I'm sorry. I wasn't understanding. So maybe you can give me a more clear picture of what you're asking um, by just sending me an email and you have it because I'm here for you. Okay, so that's really kind of... The automation, it really is so easy to use and it's so interactive and it's so much fun. Um, so why not try it on the demo version from off of our website and play with it and see how you engage with it. And I know you'll love it. And right now I believe that there's a sale, it's on sale this month. So please, you know, check out our, our sales and, and you'll know, see what's on sale and and just enjoy quilting. It's just another way to, to interact with your quilt and make it so perfect. And it's a great way to start designing it and making a one-of-a-kind quilt. Like every quilt we ever do, we want it to be one-of-a-kind. Um, and so, if you have any more questions, I know I've talked your ear off and I know I went through it really quick, we will focus more and more on the automation and ways for you to engage it and use it specifically we'll go through the pantograph modes and apply them to the quilts myself i use them all and i'm always learning there's not a day that doesn't go by that i learn something new and whatever i learn i'm going to impart to you and i would love it if you impart your wisdom to me so thanks for joining me and i will see you next week when we have lots more to come Take care. Bye-bye.